So yesterday for our project, we ordered the uh, WS2812B circular RGB display. It will take somewhere between 30 and 45 days for the thing to get here. So in the meantime, I ordered a strip of the LED in a different form factor that I could get very shortly on Amazon. These obviously won't work for the final project, but it'll go a long way towards being able to develop a driver that I can use to drive the LEDs when they actually get here. In the meantime, let's take a look at how we're going to generate audio. That was another one of the items that we saw as a risk to the project. It's very likely that I'll use the PIC24FJ256GA702 microcontroller for this project. This is kind of my go-to micro uh, if for hobby projects, unless there's a compelling reason to use something else. I keep a handful of them in stock. It has 256K of uh, flash and 16K of RAM, so it's a capable, a lot of capable memory. Uh, the GPIO does a lot of great things. It has 5 volt tolerant inputs, which is really useful in some cases. It has DMA, and it has a whole bunch of peripherals that do lots of great things. So the other important thing about this is that it comes in a dip package, which makes it easy to prototype on a breadboard. For this project, we're going to have to generate audio. There's two ways that I could see us doing sampled audio. One is driving a PWM circuit using the uh, output compare blocks and then running through that through a filter, which would uh, essentially average out the PWM percentage into an analog output. The other way we could do it is that the 256GA705 has a 32-step uh, comparator, the output of which can be driven to a pin. And so we could take this output and drive it to an audio op amp and use that to potentially drive the speaker. Right now, I think that's the path that we'll probably take. Uh, we get 32 outputs, which is the equivalent of five bits of audio resolution. So we saw before that we have a video. And in that video is sound. So the question is, how do we get this sound off of this video and into the microcontroller? First, let's convert this video using VLC. And we will say, we'll call this untitled, or raw audio. And I did this once before I did the video, so you guys can, uh, can see it. But here we go. And we'll say, okay, give me CD quality audio. And we'll give this just a minute. It's doing the conversion. Just an audio file. So that's good, but I can't dump, dump an audio file directly into my microchip pic. So what do we do now? Let's open Audacity. Audacity is an open source uh, audio editing program. And we will open this raw audio file. The first thing that we see is that it is a stereo file. That is not going to work for us because I'm not going to have two separate speakers. So let's go to tracks, mix, stereo down to mono. Now we have one track. Next, let's grab the section of audio that is what we want. And I believe it's this one right here. Yep, that's the one. So we'll trim it as neatly as we can. We don't want any, any extra if we can avoid it, because that's going to take up flat space in our microcontroller. Good. So let's make a new project that has just that in it. Now at this point, we have audio that's sampled as... Uh, floats at 44,000 samples per second. 
that's not going to work for us in our 5-bit microcontroller. So right off the bat, let's see what we can do to reduce that. The first thing is this sampling rate. We don't need CD quality audio. So let's go to track, resample, and let's see if we can get by with 8 kilohertz audio. That'll give us a cutoff frequency of 4 kilohertz. Essentially, any frequency above 4 kilohertz is going to get lost. And let's listen to that. Yeah, that's not awesome. Let's try again, and this time we'll do 16 kilohertz, which essentially means at 8-bit resolution, we would have 16K of data per second of audio. I like that. Now, just as a reference, we could take this guy, say analyze, and plot the spectrum. And we say, okay, look, there's a lot of signal down to three kilohertz. There's a fair amount down to uh, eight kilohertz. And over here is what we lose. So we can see we're not losing a whole ton of signal in the above. You can hear the difference, but it's not horrible. So we will definitely say, okay, let's take this effect. I'm sorry, track, resample. And again, now at this point, if we do an analyze, analyze and do a plot, a plot spectrum, you can see it drops off immediately because uh, the sampling, the frequency of the audio can't be more than half of the sampling frequency. Next, let's take a look at this guy and say, okay, this is not using our full range. We want to be able to use all 32 of those possible settings. So let's say amplify, and we will amplify this guy up. And it looks like 8.6 dBs of uh, amplification will keep us from clipping. Okay, so now we have a new signal. So we're getting there. We've got mono 16,000 hertz, but we want only eight, uh, eight bit output. So we're gonna change the project now so that to 16,000 hertz sampling so that the export rate will be 16,000 hertz. Now we're gonna go to export and say export audio. We're gonna say raw headerless and eight bit PCM. Uh, essentially, that means it's going to output values of 0 to 256 for the uh, raw value. So, Now, if we take a look at our 8-bit raw, we see there's 64K of data. We've got about four seconds of data at 64K, so that's exactly what we expect. We can edit this. If we open it in Vim, we see essentially all we get is a lot of a uh, lot of binary. But if we look at the hex, hey, here's the actual values that we're seeing, and you know they vary some. And if you take them and you import them again, uh, you can see that. So the question is, how much worse did our audio get for going to eight bit sampling? Is that acceptable? So let's open now. I'm sorry, can't open. Let's do a new project and let's import raw data, 8-bit raw. We're going to tell it the same, since there's no header, it doesn't know what this data means. So we have to tell it what the sampling frequency is and import it. Let's play it back now. How does that sound? Not fantastic, but certainly good enough for our project. So now the next question is, this is 8-bit audio with 256 different possible options. Can we go down to 5-bit? Uh, and so how do we do that? 
what we're essentially doing is saying we're going to take audio that has 256 different levels and reduce it down to 32 different levels. How do you do that? Well, effectively, you group them together. Picture for a moment a ruler that has 12 inches on it, but there's a lot more than 12 divisions. If you look at the halves, there's 24. If you look at the quarters, there's 48, and it goes on like that. So suppose that you had some measurement that was taken in quarter of an inches, but that you wanted to effectively reduce that resolution. If you erase all of the marks, except for the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 inches, essentially now you have a ruler that only has 12 increments. Anything in this whole range is 0. Anything in this whole range is 1. Anything in this whole range is 2. That's essentially what we are going to do with this data that's been sampled at 8 bits. I wrote a quick program called Bit Reducer. All this program does is it asks you what file do you want to open. It reads in all the bytes from those files. And it essentially cuts off the bottom three bits, which then separates the data out 32 different levels, 5-bit resolution. It saves all the files into a new file called out. So we run this particular file. We say button one. Let's pull in our 8-bit raw. And boom, it's done. Now we have 8-bit raw out. We'll rename that as 5-bit raw. Up. Okay, 5-bit raw. So now the question is, does that sound good or not? So we'll go to New, go to Audacity, Import Raw Data, 5-bit raw. The sampling rate hasn't changed, but the bit depth did. Let's listen to it again. Again, we get a deterioration in quality, but it's not terrible. Let's listen to the raw from the previous one. Not too bad. If we go here, what you'll see is that the number of different steps, the steps are effectively farther away than if we zoom in to this same level on the 8-bit sampled version. So essentially the waves are just squarer in the 5-bit volt, the five bit than they are in the 8-bit. So now we need to do one more thing. We need to be able to also write those values out to a particular string so that we can store them into the PIC micro. Now we'll run our program again on the 8-bit uh, raw value. And this time we get a C file that has all of the data that we need in it. In our next video, we'll configure the microchip pick using the MPLAB uh, microchip code configurator tool. And we'll actually build the circuit and play the sound. Broadwell Consulting provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with EN 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting.